Hello everybody, welcome back. All right, so today um, I'm going to take you along here where I build this um, power switch tail um, or for my Arduino. Uh, you can kind of call it what you want. Essentially what I need to do is figure out a way for the Arduino to control 120 volts AC. So um, this is just a box that I um, fabbed up on a just a simple little you know metal brake. And my plan is to put um, this on the front, so I'll have you know three plugs, and then inside of here I'm going to use these um, little boards I got off eBay uh, from a seller called New York Platform, and it's just a single five volt relay or five volt relay has an opto isolator, and uh, I'm going to use these for my aquarium. So I'm kind of obsessed with this. Um, with you know making some kind of uh, power switch system system up from Arduino, I have a couple other videos where I use solid state relays. Um, however, the reason why I'm using mechanical relays is uh, I have a return pump in my sump, and that pump runs 24 hours a day. And only if something goes wrong do I need to turn it off. So sometimes doing feed-ins when I'm doing water changes. And then um, if something happens and, um, you know, there's a problem with the water, it starts leaking, um, I have a float switch that shows that it's low and it'll turn it off. So ideally, this relay is going to sit just neutral, and I'm going to use the normally closed tab, so the relay tabs that are usually connected together, and that's going to run the pump normally. And if there's a problem, then I'll have the Arduino write a, um, in this situation, a low, which will turn this... Um, relay on which will take power away from the switch mechanism so again I'm kind of obsessed uh, this is the like first one I'm one of the first couple ones I made and then in here is just a little board that I designed that has the relays on it it has a simple RJ11 thing or um, plug so I can plug it in and then I have a you know just a regular 120 volts AC plug let me show you um, this is the board that I designed for just the relays. These are the same relays as on this. And um, let's see if I can get a better shot here. Essentially what I have is two diodes, um, and then I have power and ground, and then this is the wires out, and then this is the wire in. And then this is what it looks like on the back. It's just a quick little board I designed and Eagle. Nothing high tech. I added some extra uh, solder just for, you know, increased current capability. And then this just goes to a four-way wire. So uh, that's what I have so far. So uh, my plan is I'm going to mount these on standoffs. Um, see if you can get that in there. So I have clearance underneath. And then what I did on the back was I added a little decoupling cap on the input, and then I add just two little extra wire scraps just so I know that you know there should be enough current capability in there. I mean, you're talking, uh, you know, my return pump is something like 54 watts or something, so you know it should be less than an amp that I'm trying to use with it. And the relay's rated at 10 amps, and you know I'm not the, the trace is pretty thick in there. I don't know if you can maybe see how thick that trace is. So it should be enough to handle, you know, one amp, so to speak. So um, what I'm going to end up doing is on these plugs, I'm going to have my skimmer on one. Again, runs 24 hours a day unless something happens. So I'll have a float switch in my, um, will be a float switch in, in the reservoir that holds the, from the collection cup. So if something happens and my skimmer starts going crazy, it'll turn that off. Um, my return pump, and then this one will be my reactor for my phosphate media. And that thing should never go off. Um, again, the only reason why I would turn it off is for uh, if there's a leak of water or something. Right? So that's why I wanted to use the mechanical relays. It doesn't require any power. So um, I'm just going to take you along and show you how I design this. And um, I know people seem to like these kind of videos on YouTube. So um, here we go.
So in case somebody asks, this is a 964 drill bit, and I just have some of these, you know, really inexpensive metal standoffs that I'm going to thread on there. So this part won't be overly exciting, but I know sometimes people like to see this kind of stuff. Um, you know, why I'm, why I'm doing this, I'll just talk about, um, <clears throat> talk a little bit about, uh, you know, uh, controlling uh, AC current with, you know, DC current or an Arduino. Um, you know, if you don't know what you're doing, then, you know, really be careful. Uh, 120 volts will kill you if you're not careful. You know, you don't want to make the bad mistake. So, you know, kind of my motivation for this is, um, I'd love the idea of, you know, computer controlled backup for my aquarium. I have a saltwater tank, and I, I just love that theory of, you know, it's just a peace of mind. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, I can buy one. Well, sure, you can buy just about anything you want. But the problem is, it's you're talking, you know, two hundred dollars for kind of a standard bottom of the line one. And my kind of motivation for this is. Um, I want somebody else who has the same idea as me, hey, I'd really love to have one of those controllers, but I don't really have, you know, 200 to $300 to buy one, then, you know what, maybe I can make one, and that's kind of my motivation with this video, and, um, you know, I know Adafruit and SparkFun, they sell those um, power switch tails, and you can get them on, you know, at the Maker Shed and all that. And that's kind of your best bet. If you really don't know and you want to be safe, you can't really go wrong with that. It's already have a relay built in, and it has, you know, straight 120-volt plugs like this. And then it has a female end, so you can just plug it in line. And you can't go wrong. And they're 29 bucks, I think. And if you don't know what you're doing, $29 is certainly worth you not getting shocked or getting possibly killed. So, you know, that's kind of my disclaimer. Be really careful with this stuff. And, um... You know, I, I, you learn somehow, and, and maybe through this video I'll teach you a little bit. But, I mean, my problem with the power switch tail is just the price. It's so expensive. I mean, $30 for and it only controls one plug. But then again, it's really, really safe. I mean, it's completely enclosed, and, you know, it's kind of dummy-proof, so to speak. That's odd. All, all the other ones seem to fit just fine, and I get to this last one, and it doesn't want to fit. Not quite sure why. Okay, so there, there it is. So this is my. Make sure I get you in here. This is gonna, the three uh, opto isolated relays. And um, what I'm going to do is put a plug on the back, and I'll bring. Um, I'm going to actually use this one. And so uh, this is just a spare cord I had. Important thing is that it has a grounded plug because this is a metal box, and so you want to make sure that you get a good ground and surface on this box. So that if something happens and one of these short out um, for whatever reason or the plug, you have a nice, good grounded surface. So what I'll actually do is um, when I bring the cord in, I'll run a little, uh, I'll grind away a little spot so that it's down the bare metal, and I'll run my ground wire to that grounded spot, 
and then I'll run a ground wire from there to each one of the plugs. And that way I have good ground connection. Alright, so there's that. Um, I, I, you know, do you need four to hold this? I don't know. I'm only using two. They, they seem very sturdy to me. I just can't see wasting too many standoffs here, uh, you know, using four. So I'm just going to use two each and see how it goes. Alright, so what's next here? The other thing I got to figure out is um, I'd really like to use this USB cable. And the reason why I'd like to use USB is that it's shielded. And the way I have now, without using shielded wires, sometimes I seem to get a lot of uh, interference. So what I want to do is run uh, this USB cable so it's something to easily plug in on the Arduino computer in. And then I would like to put this in and control it. The problem that I have is I really need five wires and I only have four because I need power and ground for each one of these. So that's two wires, power and ground. And then I need a control wire and that would be um, three, one for each of these. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do about that. <clears throat> um, I did think about using uh, like a port expander, like shoving a port expander chip in there, but I really want to minimize the electronic circuit, circuitry in this box so that I tend not to get electrical interference. Um, the way I have it now in my other box that I did, it just I have a lot of interference. And uh, this is one of the, this is another one I made up. And and here is you can't see it, but it's another one of those relay boards that I showed you earlier. I made three of these up, and now I actually can control each um, each plug separately. And in there I have a port expander chip and some microchip uh, MCP two three zero zero eight, and then I have a um, a, a relay driver like the ULN, um, what's it, 230 or something, 2300, and uh, that's just a transistor driver chip. And the way I have it working is um, it all runs through this RJ45 line. The RJ45 line uh, would run to my Arduino, and then my Arduino would talk via I2C to um, the port expander chip. The port expander chip would then uh, provide ground to the um, relay driver chip and then that would run each of the relays. However, what I'm really worried about is this sounds good until you get up and you start using it and then I have these pumps and motors which are really noisy electronically. And so I have it now on my skimmer if I just touch the cord, so this is plugged in, if this was my skimmer line, as soon as you touch it it wants to cause a um, it wants to cause the Arduino to reset. So my plan is to put all electronic components in another location so that I can electrically isolate them from the mains electricity. So once I plug this in, my Arduino will be in its own little box completely away from all the uh, mains electricity and hopefully that will eliminate the interference that I should have. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I might go look through my uh, junk drawer and see if I can't find a, another shielded wire, maybe like an old serial cable or something, and then I can just chop off the end and use that. It'll have more wires than I need, but it at least will give me um, a nice shielded cable. And, and, you know, if you don't know what shielded means, it's, there's this little wire. Um, so you have... And, and USB, you got data plus, data minus on the white and green, and then you have red and black power and ground, and then there's this wire here, which is completely shielded all the way around these other wires. And then that actually is tied on the USB cable, it's tied to this silver case here. This was the first one I've been up. I, I found an old AV switch in the garbage uh, can, and that was for like a printer, printer port. And I thought, hmm, that's a nice metal case. Maybe I can use that for plugs. And what I actually did was, in the front, I used those little black push-in connector plugs, and then I put three solid-state relays in it, and I actually ended up with a nice solid-state relay box. So this was the first one I made. And then I made this one later on, and this one I'm actually going to put four solid-state relays in. I made it a little bigger, um, as, you can, uh, as you can see. And so I'll actually put four solid-state relays in this one, and then I'd really like to use these regular plugs. Um, a lot of people like to use these plugs here, and you can see they have like this uh, 
you know this push-in style fitting and that's fine the problem is, is they're kind of complex to get to actually you know make a hole to fit them in and these things are expensive you know they're a, a dollar fifty a piece or something I think at the at my it's not a Radio Shack but it's another electronic store and uh, that's the only one really in my area that I can go to and if you buy them online you're paying for the shipping so it doesn't really make them economical unless you're buying you know maybe thirty of them but I can go to Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever I can get a plug for you know fifty nine cents and you can get them for forty nine cents if you buy a box of ten so uh, the other thing that's nice about these is something happens to it and like uh, this one I cut the ears off to use for something else and, and you ruin it, you throw it in the garbage, it's 50 cents where you know you throw a couple of these away and it gets kind of expensive at you know basically two dollars a piece. Uh, a half inch drill bit. So that takes care of that. Let me just file down the edges here. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sand away some of this where these screws mount so that the two will actually create a good ground contact. And that's what that you actually want. You want a nice, good, shiny um, spot. So I have the two shiny spots where the screws connect. So that way when it um, connects in here, I'll do the same thing. I'll sand these away. And then it'll create good ground connection between these two pieces of metal. And then uh, what I'm going to do is when I bring my cord in, I'll put a small little um, lock washer there and actually ground the power cable from the plug to this piece of metal as well. And the reason why I did the hole on this side is uh, this is actually where the um, DC side is. All right, so what I actually did just did there was um, I want to be able to uh, run the wire, the wires all the way to the end. So I just kind of uh, extended the jacket so that I have enough room to get to all of them. And then I'm just going to take this little guy here and just, uh, squeeze it together. Squish this in the hole and there we
Perfect. So now I have a nice, um, you know, it's a good connection. I won't short out. The other thing some of you guys might be thinking about is those wires are kind of thin. Well, even with all three relays energized at the same time, it's pulling 200 milliamps. So this is about the same size wire as your USB has, and that can, can supply 500 milliamps. So I know I'll be okay with just these three relays. If you were adding more relays to the system, and when I did my big six box relay, I actually used a lot thicker wire so that if all six relays were energized at the same time, it wouldn't um, overheat the wire. So I'm just going to strip these wires here. Talk about actually getting the plugs in there. And so what I did was I, uh, I drilled a little bit larger hole for my um, connector to bring my mains plug in. And I'm going to use this little grommet here, this little non-insulated grommet. You can actually get this in the hardware store for um, regular uh, NM or non-metallic wire. And so um, I'll just use that as an insulation bushing. And I uh, have it all uh, wired up. I'll show you that in a minute. So what I'm going to do now is um, I just sat this on there and I traced out the plugs. And so now what I'm going to do is uh, actually end up doing like little square boxes. What I'd like to do with the plug is just make it where I can just plop it right on in there. So I'm just going to line up the plugs here. And I'll show you this in just when I'm done with it here. So now, um, hopefully you can see that I have just drew straight lines across, and uh, that'll be how I uh, am going to end up cutting it. I'm going to use a, just a, like a Dremel tool I have, and I'll just cut these lines, and then I'll cut um, the bottoms out, and I'll end up with a hole, and I can slide these um, plugs in. So the other thing this will do is it will give me a nice even swamp box I'm just going to end up cutting out and that will make it perfect for um, my plugs. And then this will go right over top and these are again just standard um, you know, switch covers and, and here's a single one that you just buy at the home center really inexpensive. This is actually a custom one so that I can put whatever I want and I just have three plugs. It's kind of a use this on an older project here so I got a little sticker residue on there. So I'm going to stick that right over top when I'm done and then you'll screw it in you'll never even know. So go ahead and get the uh, probably should have done this before I attached the wire but I'm going to get the tool out and I'll cut this all out. Okay so I'm back once again. Sorry I'm not going to be able to show you a video of me cutting out this hole because my air compressor came on and I use this this three and a half inch cutoff tool uses my air compressor here and uh, the compressor came on and it was loud and um, you know however you need to do it if you want to nibble it out um, you can even take a drill bit and drill all the way around however you want to do a Dremel tool um, then I just took the file and uh, filed these edges down and uh, let's see how it looks the other thing I did was cut a piece of cardboard and stuck it down in there. Um, so that um, I didn't mess up these relays. And let's see how it looks. 
And then it might be a little too thin. Let me grab another plug. And of course it looks like I'm going to be um, a couple plugs short, but anyhow, let me get this in the shot here. How it's going to end up looking or something like that. I'll have that there. Um, this won't go all the way down because of the screws, but here it is without screws. So this will just sit in there like this. And uh, actually, let me get a couple more of those plugs so you guys can see how it looks. And uh, these are just old plugs that I have. I'm probably not going to use these. They don't look too uh, happy here. This is probably why I replaced them. But essentially what will happen is this will go there. Um, I'll put the holes for screws in there. And then this plate will fit right over top like this. And that's what it's going to look like. And it's going to look pretty nice. And so it'll look like a, a plug box. So yeah, so um, anyhow, I think what I'll do is get these lined up how I want them so I can um, stick some holes. Stick some, ho uh, drill some holes in here. So uh, these will be the holes that I end up drilling here. And I'll make them pretty big because, um, you know, there's usually a little room for some play in there. So I want to make sure that when I put the screws in, I kind of move and maneuver the plug around the same you would on any of the other plugs. And so, yeah, all right, so let's see. I think what I'll do before I do that is um, I'm going to end up painting just the uh, sides here, here, and here. Only what you see. Huh? You're not going to see any of the front, and you're not going to see any of the bottom. So I'll probably just leave that how it is, um, but that way I have a little bit of paint on it. I'm probably going to end up just taking this wire out so I can paint it a little easier. Or maybe I'll just leave the wire and just use my cardboard, I mean. Oh, let me show you the wire, and I guess I didn't finish showing you that. So here's the wire, and there's my shielding clip from the DC control cable, and then um, just I just jumpered uh, the power and all these, and then they all have their own control. And um, once I get, I can't believe I don't have any plugs. I usually have a box. I guess I'm ran, ran out. Once I get plugs, then I'll be able to wire up the the outlets. But I think what I'll do is just make little jumper wire. I'm going to use this 16-gauge uh, cord I got here. And how I got this was I had an old uh, extension cord. I just cut up and used that. And I'll just run from here, figure out how long I need to go to, you know, about here where the wire is. You don't want to make them too long because, remember, this wire has to fit in this box. So, um, you know, I'll kind of make it as short as I possibly can. So let's see. Let's just, I guess I can just do that real quick solder on the end of those wires, give it a little rigidi rigidity so I can uh, slide them in the uh, terminals here. So now I have my three um, pigtails, and they're going to run to the plugs. And uh, which we're going to try to use these old dirty plugs, but there, I'm just not going to do it. I'll just have to go get some new ones. Um, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I um, prep the ends. As you can see on this. Uh, relay board I made. What I do is I usually just cut the, the strip the wire a little um, long and then I'll wrap it and I'll tin it with solder so that I end up with these 
kind of this nice rigid so that when I um, wrap them around the plug-ins, I don't end up with, um, let's see if you can see that there, I end up with a nice a kind of even surface for the screw. Um, when I tighten this screw down, it kind of fits in there perfect like that. So anyhow, that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so um, see here I got, I ended up changing the end um, and using a just a regular non-metallic fitting. Um, the black thing I had before earlier in the video just didn't work out well with this um, cord. The insulation's kind of thick. And um, again, you can find these. These are called NM uh, uh, connectors, and they're designed to screw in the side of like metal boxes, and then create a secure connection without a chance of it uh, grounding uh, out there. So I got my cord, and um, I ran uh, three more little black jumper wires here for the um, uh, ACN, and so that'll end up just kind of tucking down in there. And um, these are going to go through here. So this will slide over top like that. And let's see, this is going to go behind there. I think now that I look back, I wish I had to put this hole on this side of the box so that, because it's kind of by this, it's, you know, around that. Um, the DC side, but we'll see how that works out. Might have to put like a little ferrite bead or something over it to try to eliminate some of the interference. So these are going to go to my plugs. So this will go to my plug there, and here and here. These wires might be a little long. I made them kind of long so I can work on the project with it, you know, all in to be in, all inside its um, the closure there. So unfortunately I don't have any plugs. So for now it's going to end it. What I'll end up doing is taking this wire and stick it on the first plug on the neutral and then I have some other copper, solid copper wire here that'll go from this plug to that plug to that plug to that plug and that'll tie the neutrals together. And then this ground wire like I said before I'm going to attach it to the side of the box here. Um, just like I did the shield and wire. All right, so I'm going to go through uh, the procedure on how to um, how I wired these up. So um, what I did was I have uh, the neutral wire coming in from the mains electricity. It runs into uh, the left side of the plug or the long side. Um, the long side is the neutral, the smaller side is the hot, the round one there is the ground. So the main so electricity comes from here, this cord, runs into this first plug. Now each plug has two screws, and uh, the brass or gold color is hot, and then the silver color screws, you can see here, are neutral. So I brought uh, the first one in here, and then I ran a, a neutral wire from this plug to this plug, and then the second screw to this screw, so I ended up with this. Um, all the grounds are tied together, and then they're tied to this same screw where the mains electricity comes in. And then uh, the hots come from uh, each of the relays. Now, I'm not a fan of using those stab connectors on the back. I don't like them. They tend to vibrate loose sometimes. I like to use the screws. Um, but, you know, you can do what you want. Now one thing that I like to do, especially with working with metal, one thing I did was because the hot side is right here, I kind of etched out a little section in there so that I have a little bit of clearance. I'm going to end up with a little bit of clearance in here. And then the other thing I'm going to do is, I've already done on the other two, so I'm going to wrap each of the plugs with some just standard electrical tape here. And that'll just give me a little extra protection against uh, any possible shorts. Now I'd like to do two wraps so that I know I have a nice good coverage. And you can 
see there, I have a nice, you know, just a little, little extra protection against that metal. I can slide this down in there. For whatever reason, uh, I actually drilled and tapped these, and I didn't make a video. So, um, it'll be, I have, um, my plugs, um, wrapped with electrical tape. They're all wired in there. And, uh, now I'm ready for my plate cover here. It's a little bit of a tight fit. Unfortunately, I messed up when I, um, drilled the holes. I made them a little too big for the screws that they come with. So, I don't have quite as much play in the plug now. The other thing I'd like to do is find one of these in metal so it's one continuous piece and not this made up section. Okay, so now um, I got the plate back on. Doesn't look too bad. The tape's a little over there. I'll just have to peel that off. Now what I'm going to do is take one of these testers and uh, there's actually this one here is for GFCI as a little button and this will just light up and tell me that my wiring is correct so I'll take this end plug it into my workbench here alright no breaker trip that's good and now I take this and I plug it in and as you can see there's two green lights so I can just go through all of them and ensure that they're green lights now you might be thinking wait a minute I thought you put relays on them yeah but remember I have the relays connected so that they normally provide power. They're normally closed and provide power on normally closed contacts so that the plug sees power. Because remember, I'm going to have a pump, uh, my skimmer, stuff that I want running all the time. And then when these wires see power, these DC control wires, they will energize the relays. So let me just show you that. Right, so what I have here is, you can't see, but it's just going to be... Um, let me do a shot here. These are just um, alligator clips I have to my Barrel Benz power supply. So what I'll do is I'll plug um, this middle one in here to the plug. You can see that the lights are there on. And so now I'll give my wires power and ground. And there's one, two, and you know, when I give the white wire power, it takes takes away the voltage. So there's voltage on that plug now. White wire sees a ground, and the plug, go, the plug goes out. All right, so hopefully that's helpful. Okay, so um, now we're done. Uh, I went ahead and labeled them yellow, white, and blue. Um, with the rest of the wires. Cleaned up the switch plate there. Got some of that nasty stuff on and uh, that's going to be it. Alright, well, hopefully this guy gives you guys some ideas on making your own um, AC-DC switch box, um, power center, whatever you want to call it. The thing is, you can't really tell I painted it too, so didn't paint the bottom. Again, you're not going to see it.